and welcome to Kankakee Podcast, where we talk about the people and places of Kankakee County. I'm Jake Lamore, and this is an episode that has been a long time coming. In fact, probably since uh, we started about two years ago now, uh, getting close to two and a half at this point as uh, we're recording this. But one of the very first people that I had really no connections with that reached out to me early on uh, starting the podcast in uh, the the spring, summer of 21 was Dr. Michael Boyd of KCC, the the president and CEO there. And I, like I said, had no connection with him at all. I got this nice email from him and he just had so many nice things to say about Kankakee Podcast, and uh, I'm welcoming him finally <laughs> onto this episode. And you have been a requested guest, by the way, oh, just wow. so you know. Yeah. There have been people that I have not prompted whatsoever. They're like, why haven't you had Dr. Boyd on the podcast yet? And I'm like, oh, it's going to happen. And I was like, I promise. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you. Thank but, you so much for being such a supporter from the beginning. Absolutely. And thank you for having me on. And and uh, I, I did. I, the minute I knew about this podcast, I, I think I, I like to say I was one of your first listeners. I doubt I was. I feel but, like but you I were because you, yeah. like I said, you were one of the, like I said, it was out of the blue. You sent me yeah. an email. You're like, I love what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. it was, I think we were only like two or three episodes in and I got that yeah. email from you. Yeah. So, you know. Two two years in for you, but uh, I you, you know you have so many other m- far more interesting people to to interview. So I'm I'm just it's a pleasure to be to be on here and uh, and to talk with you and be a part of it. But uh, but I know that there's other people that uh, that certainly have have more interesting stories to tell. You know that that's why I love you, Doctor Boyd. Is you're so <laughs> humble. You're very humble, but I think you're very interesting. And it's not even j- about an interesting thing. Sometimes it's just to have another person on that just yeah. has a positive attitude and just has excitement because every time yeah. you and I interact, I just, I always feel good. Yeah. You know, yeah. you, you have a positive, uh, vibe as the cool kids say about you and you, there's just an excitement about whatever it is that whether it's KCC related or not, it's, I think that's one of the biggest things you bring to the table is you aren't just excited about KCC. You're excited about almost anything happening in the, the greater Kankakee area you have excitement about and you support it and you're there for it. Um, well, there's a lot to be excited about. And I think that's what attracted me to your podcast first, because you're, you're telling the great stories of of this place. And uh, and it's and it's fun to hear positive vibes. It's it's fun to, to, to hear great stories. And uh, thanks for saying all of that. I, I try to do that at the college as well. And I, I if you talk to any of our students, I, I hope they'd say the same thing, you know, <laughs> that, that I'm, I'm present on campus and I try to, to give a positive energy um, everywhere I go. And if we all do that, I think uh, we'll all enjoy hanging out a little bit more. Yeah. Well, from the outside, it looks like you have mastered that craft. <laughs> and I, I don't know if you feel the same way, but I'm just saying from the outside, it looks pretty good. So, you know, I just want to give you that. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, thanks for saying that, but it's a great environment to do that in too. Mm-hmm. And, and, uh, I think, you know, a lot of your guests have been, uh, residents of Kankakee County longer than I have, and I'm sure we'll get into this a little bit. Yeah. Um, but you know, one of the benefits I think of moving into this County when I did about 10 years ago is that you get to see all the positive things that are happening and it's hard not to be positive when you're interacting in this community because there's just so much cool. I mean, there's so many cool things happening right now. Uh, mm-hmm. Not only your podcast, your podcast has certainly highlighted a lot of them, oh, but thank you. you and I get to um, interact at some of those things just just because that's when we tend to, to see each other, yes. you know, at, at yeah. some celebration or some uh, yeah, achievement that's happening in the county. And uh, we're both there to uh, to be a part of it. But, you know, when when you, you come into a county like this, you you have the, the benefit of seeing everything with fresh eyes. And that perspective has given me just a, a real sense of what's good here. And, and it's, how can you not smile? How can you not give high fives? How can you not, you know, have positive energy about the things that are happening, the people that you interact with here too? I do want to take the time to personally thank you and all of Kankakee Community College, uh, you know, Carrie Nugent, mm-hmm. all of the staff for being such a, a good support 
and uh, you know sponsor of Kankakee Podcast because Absolutely. you put your uh, your words uh, to to action and you have supported Kankakee Podcast through uh, and 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 helping us continue you know with your support. So thank you for Absolutely. that. And yep. and as you know, I don't have to tell you, but you can listen to almost every single episode of this podcast. And KCC <laughs> flies out of a guest's <laughs> mouth. They're like, "Well, I started at KCC, uh -huh. and then uh -huh. you know X, Y, and Z." Yeah. So I wasn't going to call that out, but I, but <laughs> I was hoping that it was apparent. It it and that it it is awesome to hear that you know. And and usually you're right. I'm I'm listening. I'm like, well, there it is. There was the connection. You know, all just things don't lead... just don't make it a drinking game because then someone is going to pass out <laughs> because right. you know yeah. every time someone says kcc yeah. take a shot and we're not, <laughs> can't do that um but, there we go or if you know he had a dollar someone uh someone said kcc on kankakee podcast i know? like that every time somebody <laughs> says that we'll, we'll put a dollar, in dollar. Hat and that'll go to a scholarship oh that's yeah. a good idea yeah there we go there we, go. we <laughs> got a case uh, we have a kankakee podcast scholarship now with kcc there we go. i love it i love it <laughs> um well let's talk about you know, you've only been here for 10 years. Where does Dr. Boyd come from? How yeah, did you yeah, get yeah. here? That's a, that's a, a, a good question. So um, I, I, are you asking me to go way back? Or are you asking Let's me where go I was? Way, way back, back, man. Let's All go right. to the beginning. Right. I love beginnings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I grew up on a, uh, in a, in a very small community. I actually grew up on a farm about seven or eight miles outside of a small town called La Harp, Illinois. And uh, I've we, never heard of it. I know you have. And most <laughs> people haven't. Although, uh, uh, on a rare occasion, I'll I'll, uh, I'll run by somebody who, who will talk about uh, where we grew up in. Is Kentucky that in the County. south? No, it's west. It's okay. it, it's still slightly south, but it's almost straight west of here. So think uh, go as far west in Illinois as you can that you know of, and then just keep going west. <laughs> <laughs> so pretty much you're touching what Missouri? Yeah, yeah at that real point, close, real close. Or Iowa, Iowa. So Burlington, Iowa, was uh, <clears throat> you know where where I grew up on on the farm uh, in in uh, right out right between La Harp, Illinois, and Carthage, Illinois. I like to say when I was growing up, we had we could either go to go to Walmart, right? To a nearest really place to go shopping or to, to go see a movie. We'd either go to Burlington, Iowa or Macomb, Illinois. Oh, okay. So, I was wondering if you were near Macomb. Yeah. You have west of Macomb. So that's that's where most people, if they know where Macomb is, they said go west of there. And they said, I didn't know you could go west of Macomb. <laughs> stuff in Illinois. So I mean, not much, but yeah. That's right. I mean, <laughs> that's right. But it was, it was a great place to grow up. I mean, my brother and I, um, you know, we, we had... Uh, I mean, our parents still own the farm there, and uh, boy, we thought we lived on a kingdom, right? You know, we we could we could range far and wide, and and we spent most of our days in the in the woods, meeting friends, uh, neighbors who were probably two miles away. We'd, we'd have these little meeting spots uh, where we'd meet together in the woods and and play all day, and you know, just just. Do stuff that country kids did. Especially if you got a patch of woods nearby. That's I right. mean, that that's just right. kind of lends itself to all kinds yeah. of possibilities yeah. in the creative young mind. Absolutely. I mean, we, we thought we were living in Lord of the Rings, right? It's just, <laughs> yeah. This is, and, you know, in a lot of ways, it was, it was, it really was idyllic. Um, uh, you know, the, the most of the, um, challenges that urban youth uh, face, we didn't have to face. We faced different challenges. Um, but, uh, but, but that was, that was, that characterized my childhood, just being, being in the country. Uh, my dad was a, a farmer and other things, a very small farm. So my mom and dad both worked, uh, worked hard. Um, uh, still own that farm, very small farm, barely enough to raise, raise our family. Um, so you put two and two together, you know, I was a farm kid, but, uh, but I went to college for English to be an English teacher. So I, I the, the farm life wasn't for me and, and, uh, my, my family would laugh at me for saying that. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of farm operation was it? Mostly corn, soybeans. Um, we had, uh, we had hogs. My dad loved to raise hogs. My, my brother loves agriculture too, and still is in the agriculture industry. Does he run the farm now? He does not. Okay. Um, he, uh, he runs a corporate farm in Wisconsin. He, 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 oh, he's not the owner. He's the manager, uh, leader of a corporate farm in, in Wisconsin. Um, Really, you know, he's really. How does your dad feel it. about that? Yeah, I think I think he understands. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I think um, you know, many many years ago, I think they wish we would have all you know stayed on the farm, um, but uh, uh, I had I had different ideas. <laughs> yes, 
There's so many s- stories of, of that. You know, we, uh, you know, we, we all pitched in to help. We, my dad, my mom and my dad both worked off the farm. Our farm wasn't large enough to, uh, to generate enough income to raise the family. So, well, and probably by, I mean, I'm guessing this is what, I don't want to like guess yeah. your age, yeah. but I'm guessing it's the seventies, eighties. Yeah. So I was born in 74. Okay. Uh, so yeah. by, by that time, having that size of a farm you couldn't, you definitely could not raise a right. family. Maybe 20 years prior, 20, 30 years prior. Sure. Sure, sure you could. Right. But it, you know. it, that was the time. And, and we could see this even in our neighborhood. As I, as I got old enough, really after I was in college and sort of watched that, how that economy was developing, uh, you know, so many people were renting land and, and the combines and the, the, you know, the harvesters were getting so huge that my dad's little four row gleaner just, yeah. <laughs> it just, it just didn't work out right no it yeah. didn't so probably i'm guessing he what did he rent out yeah his yeah. land and he went to go work yeah at a factory or something like that right yeah yeah were you always fascinated with english or to, or story Absolutely. was it more of a storytelling thing yeah. for you at a young age or no uh, yes and uh and fantasy literature <laughs> okay like lord of the rings you just yeah, mentioned yeah like lord of the rings so are you a can, fan of lord absolutely. of the rings absolutely yeah, yeah, okay. how can you not be right? <laughs> that's yeah, true yeah. that's true um and and you know other things science fiction um you know the, the and i know this all sounds hip now because there's movies here right but, but <laughs> that the, was before the days of that <laughs> yeah but the frank herbert dune series too and I, and i remember had, you know that's what i read as a book report you know like in middle school and I remember my teacher just saying, how are you reading that? <laughs> and, and so, you know, er, my earliest memories are just um, uh, really into stories and storytelling. And, you know, as, as I came into high school, then I had a great teacher named Craig Rigg. And uh, he was our, our English teacher. And, and um, I hope he doesn't find this because he may, he, <laughs> he, I don't think he'll mind this, but a, a bit eccentric, which which I also really enjoyed. It was fun to have an eccentric English teacher. You like know. in what way? I mean. Yeah, just had different ideas. Yeah. You know, I, I think as, uh, as you're starting to um, be, develop some intellectual awareness, um, you get fascinated um, by people who think differently. You know, and aren't willing or or are willing to express those different ways of thinking. So, you know, I think he was smart enough to see the things I was reading and bring to class and then introduce me to things like Samuel Taylor Coleridge's Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner and and uh, Homer's Odyssey and these other things that open the door to um, classic literature and um, just some things that I, I found just fascinating. You knew you didn't want to stay on the family farm. And you knew you wanted to pursue uh, being an English teacher. So where did you go to college? Yeah, so uh, so I went to Illinois State University, and uh, it was it was a great fit for me. Um, Illinois State University at the time, and it still is, was very much known as a teacher college. And so that appealed to me. I knew I wanted to teach. I knew I wanted to teach English. And uh, so when I visited Illinois State University, you know, that emphasis on teaching uh, very much appealed to to where I saw myself in the future. And, um, you know, I, I, I remember seeing that seal, Illinois State seal for the very first time. And uh, it said, and gladly would he teach and gladly learn. And uh, not only did that appeal to me, but I saw it as a, a, a quote right out of Chaucer's Canterbury Tales. And so, it, you know, it, 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 I was sold right from that moment. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, taking in your college experience then, what was uh, ISU like for you then? You know, it was a real eye opener for me. Um, I had spent very little time away from uh, my family farm. Uh, we didn't travel that much when when uh, when I was young, uh, and so, you know, getting uh, out of the county, getting uh, to see, you know, kind of just a world class university, but but you know, meeting so many new people from various uh, from from different backgrounds than myself was just you know a, an absolutely rich cultural experience, and I embraced every part of it. Yeah, um, spent a lot of time um, uh, at the college, spent a lot of time meeting new people. Um, my very first year, I was actually in the international dorm. And so what an eye opener for uh, you know a, a young person. I was 17 at the time when I left for college uh, to go from a, uh, a rural county in Western Illinois to a world-class uh, university and uh, be with so many people from from various different countries all was, over the world uh, it was it was wonderful and a great a great source of learning for myself 
you finish up your four years, uh-huh. you get your bachelor's yeah. in uh, educate or specifically English. But you, if I remember correctly, is this the point where you almost got a <laughs> what was it? Um, a, another sure. you were going to minor or sure. major in another study. Well, look, I I loved college. Um, I I just loved it. I loved everything about it. I and and uh, you know I I went there to be an English teacher, but I discovered history and and pursued a history minor as well. Um, and just and just started to to really appreciate all the things that that, I, that there was to offer there from uh, from an education point of view. And um, so I I remember I, I was finished up with my um, uh, student teaching. And, um, I, I, I mean, I had everything I needed. The bachelor's degree was finished. The education degree was finished. All of my pre-service teaching was, was finished. So I'm, I'm ready to launch. I'm ready to get out into the job market, but I'm looking over my transcripts and, and, uh, and noticed, um, that I was just a few credits shy of a peace studies minor. And, um, I, I had, I'd really gotten uh, along well with the teacher of that particular program, it was also the same time um, that a, a person named Kofi Annan was uh, active on the world stage and really trying his best, along with you know uh, others, to 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 seek out conflict and try to resolve that conflict uh, on the world stage. So I'm watching this and and thinking, um, you know, what a hero that it, that person is, and, and admiring the work that that he was doing to try to resolve conflict between nations. Um, and so, so here I'm studying this in school too, and that really appealed to me to yeah. uh, to pursue that peace studies minor. I can remember coming home and uh, and uh, having a conversation with my dad, and and he says, you know, well, you're going to get out there and get get a job, right? You're going to go teacher. And I, I remember telling him, you know, I'm I'm so close. This peace studies minor is just right there. So I'm thinking about going back in the fall and pursuing. And he just looked at me. I knew that conversation was over immediately. Son, you're crazy. Uh, <laughs> and you know, my parents were never prescriptive. They let me explore and do what I needed to do. That was kind of the one moment he said, nope, that is not happening. You you uh, have the credentials you need to get a good job. It's time for you to go get a good job. He was probably so. afraid that you would get that and try <laughs> and have a hard time getting a job in that. Because yeah. for, for that moment there, did you picture yourself being one of those people in the middle trying well, sure. to resolve peace sure right you know? i mean conflict in the middle east sure. was a huge, huge. Mm-hmm. um i mean and it still is mm-hmm. obviously it, it's like going on what it's 40 50 That's right. years at this point it's been a persistent problem it's right? been a persistent mm-hmm. problem in the middle east so i mean and especially uh you know that's leading up to 9 11 right so um, you got it. So yeah. you kind of saw yourself like, "Ooh, I could make a difference and maybe help resolve some well, of these conflicts." Well, and- sure. You know, I was young, uh, ambitious. Um, you know, I, I just spent um, you know an undergrad at at a great university with this mix of cultures and this mix of ideas, and absolutely, I was ambitious. You know, <laughs> uh, in retrospect, it's it's probably best that uh, that I went out and and sought gainful employment. Um, but yeah, at the time, you know, you, you, young people are always, they should be ambitious and they should have, um, you know, uh, visions for what the future could look like and, and see themselves. And this is what we try to teach at Kankakee Community College, you know, not only helping students have a vision, but, uh, helping them see themselves as agents in the world for good. So we want them to feel like they can make an impact on their communities or, or even larger than that on, on society as a whole. Um, so yeah, I, I, I kind of had that, uh, when I was, when I was moving on from my undergrad to my professional life yeah. uh, and I don't regret it at all, but, um, maybe someday I'll go back and get that peace <laughs> studies minor. You should, you absolutely <laughs> yeah, should. And, yeah. but you know, it's funny you say that cause I kind of feel like the work you do today, you're probably actually applying that cause you're often the middleman between, let's say an employer and like a potential mm-hmm employee. Yeah. So you're kind of, uh, you're kind of making that, that conversation and, and, and trying to get, uh, everyone to kind of align with each other. Right. And resolve there, conflict. <laughs> there's a lot to that, Jake. So, yeah. uh, so conflict resolution sure is, uh, is, is, uh, is something I do quite a bit. Um, 
and you can call it conflict resolution. And oftentimes it is as simple as that. There's two people or two uh, groups in conflict and trying to help them find, uh, find, find where they agree and find a, a road forward past that conflict. But uh, even outside of that, uh, when you, when you think about groups with varying interests, you know, how do you find what's common among those interests and find ways that is, that are mutually beneficial for moving forward. So, yeah, I, I think that's, I, I think you're right. I, I'm, I'm, uh, kind of a peace studies. <laughs> you are. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you, yeah. It's working on peace studies all the time. Every mm -hmm. single day, probably. Yeah, I hope. Yeah. Um, so you, you <laughs> decide not to, you know, get that minor and you get your first job in teaching and you knew you wanted to be a high school teacher Right, I did, and yeah. so uh, wh why was it high school though? Why weren't were, you weren't interested in younger? Were you just kind of terrified of younger no, kids, no, or I, was it? You know, I wasn't terrified of of, of younger uh, children, but you know, I, I was young and still idealistic. And you know, part of what appealed to me about high school teaching is what appealed to me about a high school curriculum, and so the the content. Um, you know, I I really wanted to teach. Homer's Odyssey, Iliad and the Odyssey. I wanted to teach uh, Shakespeare. Um, I wanted to teach, um, you know, the poetry of Coleridge. These are these are pieces that are are better fit in the high school context. And you know, later as I became more mature as a teacher and as a human, I realized that that you know that content itself sh I shouldn't be what I was focused on. Um, but that's why I had my eyes set on on high school because I had fallen in love with that literature, and um, it has more of a context in high school than some of the the junior high or middle school content uh, in your English classes. So it wasn't the students. I, I think there's a lot of energy in in middle school, and and uh, I, I, I you put that yeah. so <laughs> like there's yeah. a lot of energy in yeah. middle school, yeah. and, and <laughs> like, it's and it's rewarding to teach that that age. Oh um, yeah. At the time, you know, the, my target as a high school teacher was really centered around the, the curriculum and the content in the English, in the high school English curriculum at the time. And so, so where did you end up landing your first teaching job? Well, yeah, there's a story leading up to that. Um, I, I cast my net far and wide. I can remember um, when when I when I printed that first batch of resumes and cover letters. Uh, boy, that stack of, of mail was was thick. <laughs> so I, I don't even know how I afforded the postage, but uh, the but, Manila but I, envelopes, yeah, right? Yeah, probably it yeah. sure was. <laughs> um, you know, that was before we had fancy uh, HR uh, online systems where everything was was. Uh, you, you could know, just uploaded. print a label on them or whatever, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So um, the the very first interview opportunity I have was actually in Watsika, at Watsika Junior High, and I've I've often asked around, um, you know, to to folks who who've been in Iroquois County for a long time if they can remember this gentleman's name, but he was the principal there at the junior high, and uh, I loved that. I, I had such a great day. I can't remember if it was afternoon or morning, but it was a half day. Um, Primarily with him, and we had uh, we had the the interview in in his office, and and uh, it was pretty standard. But when we were done with the interview, he he pretty much let me know the job was mine if I wanted it, and uh, he said, "Let me let me take you around town." I thought, "Okay, that's kind of a nice tour of town." We hopped in his old pickup truck. He lit a tobacco pipe and and we drove around Watsika <laughs> while he smoked his pipe and showed me all the uh, the ins and the outs of the town. It was. Absolutely wonderful experience. I loved it. It it was it was a fun uh, it was a fun experience in my first interview, and uh, I remember leaving there going, "I'm going to take this job. I don't want to be a junior high teacher, but I'm going to take this job." But just you know that lingering doubt uh, was in my mind. I, I aimed to teach high school. So, And I, if that was a high school position, there's a good chance yeah, that would yeah. have been your first oh, I, job. I think I would have jumped at it yeah, for sure. For sure. I mean, what did you like what you saw in Watsika? Absolutely. I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah. you know. You know, I, I, I think we talked about this earlier. I, I yeah. came from a small town, so right. Watsika was, felt big to me. You know, I had actually quite a bit bigger than the, the town I grew up in. So yeah. I, the, the culture uh, was felt right and uh, the experience that day was right. Um, but I, but I gave it a week and, uh, I think just a couple days later I had an interview at, uh, Morton high school, Morton, Illinois is a community right outside of Peoria, East Peoria. And, um, 
they quickly offered me a job as well. And so within, within a week, I had two job offers, one in high school and one in junior high. And I took the, took the, the job at Morton High School. Okay. That was my first, uh, my first job out of college. So your first day of teaching comes around. What was, <laughs> what was that like? I mean, obviously you had done some student uh -huh. teaching sure. before then. And did you do student teaching in high school? Um, yes. Okay. Uh, Bloomington High School. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you did have that uh, experience and that little bit of experience sure. in high school with student teaching. So yeah, what was your yeah. first day? The first memory I have, um, I thought, you know, we'd spent a lot of time in uh, at Illinois State in the teacher education program talking about societal issues and the challenges of being a teacher um, in the late 90s. Um, so Morton's a, a very um, upper middle class community. Uh, I knew that going in. Um, we had uh, we had some orientation and they helped us make that you know make the transition. Most of us hired that year were right out of college, and and so we were really trying to just what does it mean to be a professional? What what do you mean insurance? What do you mean you know invest part of your paycheck? That, that kind of four hundred one k. What yeah, is that? Yeah. Just growing up kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, so the first uh, actual day on the job was was the day when all the teachers come back. So it's you know the the prototypical teacher in service, and I can remember just hanging out in my classroom getting to know my my colleagues and they were all fired up you know this was going to be the day where we're just going to we're, we're just going to put our foot down and we're, we're going to put an end to this because it's we can't do this we can't take this any longer and boy this is you know first time all the teachers are back all the administrators in the building something tense is happening what is going on i'm kind of scared and Ah, uh, just uh, trying to figure it out, and and sure enough, the the teacher leaders did. They took on the administration because something has to be done about these students keeping soda in their lockers. <laughs> and and Jake, when I when and I you, and you're you're a young guy, that's right, straight out of college. You're like, what's, what's the, the deal? What's the big deal? Like, <laughs> like really, we're yeah, getting. <laughs> uh, it's true, and and uh, I can just remember putting my head down and thinking, oh my. Um, you know, who cares if you got a soda pop in your locker, you know, and two, if this is the biggest challenge we're facing here, um, then good for us. We, but yeah. So there was like, okay, really? And yeah. then the other part of you had a sense of relief almost that's because right. you're like, oh, that's right. This is a big deal. Yeah. Okay. Then. Yeah. But you know, a couple, you know, I, I mentioned that, that, that first, that cohort of, of new teachers that I came in with, we were all young. We were all right out of college, very idealistic. And, you know, we, we, I remember dialoguing with them about that and saying, are you, are you kidding me? I mean, that's what we're complaining about. Let's, let's really do something great here. And if we can just move everyone professionally towards, um, attending to student learning and student needs and you know, kind of, they got a soda pop in their locker room. Let it go, man. Let it, let it go, people, you know? So it that's- just, It just sounds like an episode of a, yeah. of a TV show. Yeah. It's really- So I, it, it, you're absolutely <laughs> right. Asked, so I know you asked the question, hoping for a, you know, a dead poet society <laughs> moment when, when I'm in the classroom and the, you know, the students' uh, eyes light up yes. and they, they finally understand something deep about the human condition. But it honestly, Jake, it was just, you know, with my colleagues complaining about uh, whatever they could complain about. Yeah. It was my first- prescient memory uh, as a uh, as a high school teacher. Yeah, America you're University. like, look, just so you know, the mm -hmm. other teachers are against this. You can hide your soda <laughs> pop in my classroom. <laughs> oh, that's, re that's rebellious. Uh, yeah. I'm kidding. Yeah, no, no, no. But but the students there were great. Um, you know, I I I, I had a I, I taught there full time for eight years, and it was it was a foundational moment for me. Um, it was, uh, you know, it was seen. I I didn't learn this until later. Um, you know, three or four years. It, but it was seen as as a very um, good job. It was that was the district that a lot of people uh, wanted to be in. Um, and so I, you know, I think I, I got a little bit lucky in that regard. Um, it wasn't until much later that, that I realized it was, pro I, I needed to move along. It was not as fulfilling looking back on it as, it, as, uh, as I felt like it was at the time. So you were yearning for more? Well, not at the time Make, I wasn't. No, you know? not at the time. No, no. Oh, I, so I just, you weren't even thinking about this. Mm -mm, Something I, just dropped on your lap. You're so right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
and uh, and that opportunity, you know, I pursued my my uh, my master's and my doctoral degree at the same time, and so. Um, you know, I, I took a semester and, and said, you know, maybe I really need to, uh, to not go back to school, but, but I loved it so much that it, it was, it wasn't before December of that, that first year as a teacher, I thought I'm going back in the spring. And so I enrolled in the spring in a master's degree program and just, you know, kept pushing through that all the way through my doctor degree program. Um, it was, um, you know, during it, right after I, I, I got that master's degree program, um, somebody came knocking at my, my high school classroom door. And, uh, it was, uh, it was the associate Dean from Illinois central college, the community college in East Peoria. And, uh, I remember, uh, him saying, Hey, I heard you have a, a master's degree, so it's time for us to do dual credit. Um, was that the first, had you known him before then? Or? Yeah. So we had spent a little bit of time, uh, at Illinois state university, uh, just running into each other. So, um, a connection, it's, it wasn't just a cold call. Um, so yeah, we had known each other and, you know, uh, people in the English field, we tend to get to know each other from conferences and yeah. And, and maybe uh, so-and-so like so said, Hey, yeah. you know, yeah. Mike yeah. Boyd. He's got his master's now. Yeah. Well, I think they were, I think they were waiting. I think they knew I was pursuing that and, okay. uh, uh, you know, waiting for that opportunity to start some dual credit. So yeah. they can get those credits and they can kind of get some of those prerequisites out it. of the way. Yeah. Yeah. So they don't have to, they can go on to mm -hmm. other classes where they're gearing towards more the field that they're sure. interested in. Right? That's right. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So. But it was a good professional opportunity for me. Um, you know, I, you, you feel when you're, you're at that stage in your career, you're teaching a, a college class. This is great. Yeah. Um, one of the, the, the opportunities I had because, um, you know, when you're a dual credit teacher, you're often seen by the college as an adjunct instructor. And so, um, I had the, uh, opportunity, I was invited to teach uh, a Saturday course, a course on Saturday. You know, when you're a, a high school teacher, being able to teach during the week is pretty much out of the question. You're, you're there, it's, you're pulling in the parking lot at yep. seven 30 and you know, at three 15, three 30, whenever the school lets out, you're probably then either coaching a sport or an activity or, or mentoring a, a club. And so you get out of there at four 30 and you get home and, and you're, you're ready for dinner and some relaxation, uh, with your end time with your family. But, um, the offer to me was to teach on Saturday and and it was a, uh, an, a developmental English class. It was a pre-college English class um, in the downtown Peoria campus for Illinois Central College. And um, I've often said about that experience at the time, I didn't want to do it. Um, you know, did you, it, you just felt pressured to I didn't, do it? No, I didn't feel pressure as, as, uh, as Shakespeare put it in, 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 uh, <laughs> in, in Romeo and Juliet, actually my poverty, not my will consents. Uh -huh. And so, you know, I was, uh, I was raising a family at the time. My, my wife, Maureen and I, um, you know, had, uh, uh started our family. And so look, I, it, it was an opportunity for, for additional income. And, uh, I jumped on it <laughs> and, and to come to find out that was, uh, really a game changer, uh, for, for my career. Um, I thought, uh, Morton high school was the perfect place to be as a teacher, relatively few problems. Like I said, the biggest problem that year was whether or not you could have a Coca-Cola in your <laughs> locker room. Um, so I thought, man, I've made it. This is all I need to do. Why, yeah, you, why would I do anything else? You kind of pictured yourself getting your 30 years mm -hmm. or 25 years, it. whatever it is, and then being done, mm -hmm. right? So. But th that Saturday, so um, it, cha it, it changed my understanding of the power of education to, to change people's lives, to enhance quality of life. The, uh, the students in my class in downtown Peoria on Saturday were non-traditional students. Um, various challenges in their life. They were almost all full-time employed, which is why Saturday was the only opportunity for them to enroll in a class. Um, many of them had, uh, had children. Um, uh, many were single parents, uh, trying to raise children. And here they were bright and early on a Saturday morning, ready to stay until four o'clock to finish up a college class and use their entire Saturday. And look, they knew that, that their ability to get past that class was going to open up a world of opportunity to them because it would give them access to a, uh, community college career program. Um, 
I started to, to, to think about what they were there for and why they were so passionate about being successful in the class. And it, it that's what I, I, I started to focus more of my professional energy on that Saturday class with those non-traditional students than I was in my um, Morton High School classroom. Look, those students, Morton's a wonderful community. Um, it still is. Uh, my my in-laws live there, so my wife and I take our family back there and visit all the time. It's a wonderful community, really is. Those students were going to be successful with or without me. They're, yeah. they're, they're in the, all the conditions are right for success there. Um, I wanted to be a part of something a little different. Um, and I could, I could feel more uh, empathy for, I could understand um, – the challenges that those students in the downtown campus were facing. I was a first generation college student. So you could relate. I could relate yeah. far more than I can relate to the upper middle class conditions of, of life that the, the, the folks I was teaching at the high school were. And, you know, I, I don't think those students really understood why they were there. It was just, you just go to high school. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. you're talking uh, almost a night and day difference. Yeah. You know, they have to, their mom or dad is making them go to school. You mm -hmm. have to go to school versus, no, I want to be in this class because I want to get a better paying job or yeah. I really want to be a nurse or I really, you know, whatever the passion is. So they want to be there. Changes the game. Yeah, it really, yeah does. it really does. So you're like, oh, so teaching doesn't, <laughs> yeah. you know, have to, you you kind of felt the, how good it feels to be a part of yeah. a big difference in yeah. someone's life. You got it. You got it. And, and how much more satisfying and fulfilling it is to be in a room with learners who have chosen to be there rather than who've arrived there because they have to, right? So... It really was uh, uh, an, a great time. It was a it was a, an exhausting time. <laughs> you know, I, yeah, because you're working full time mm -hmm. at the high school, and then you're also teaching uh, classes at the uh, the um, community college. Community yeah. college, yeah. And pursuing a doctoral degree. Um, so you know, I, I stop and. <laughs> how are and, you alive right now? <laughs> well, I'll tell you how I'm alive, and uh, her name's Maureen, and my <laughs> my wife. So, you know, when 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 we met. Um, uh, that's when all of this started. And there's no way that I could have pursued graduate degrees at the same time I was working full time and raising a family and teaching adjunct uh, for Illinois Central College, unless she was there to support me. So, you know, I can remember us having conversations about it. And in, in every case, she's like, you need to do this. Let's do this. Well, and, and she, her support, the, the role that she played in helping our family move through all of that, uh, I, I, we, I couldn't have done it without her yeah. for sure. How much longer then did you teach at Morton? And then, cause I'm, I'm guessing you made the complete transition into teaching in uh, a community college setting. Yeah. Like I said, it wasn't, it wasn't long after that Saturday course. And I, I realized that's where I needed to spend my professional energy. Um, so, so the, 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 the first time a, um, a full-time tenure track position came open in Illinois central, I, I jumped on it. My, my, I think my resume was probably at the top of their stack because the minute <laughs> it came open, it, I was in. Cause you were already on their radar yeah, being, being yeah. an adjunct professor. Yeah. So. I didn't take that for granted. Um, those, those jobs that still are, are highly competitive. And, um, but, but I knew that's where I wanted to be. So I took the risk and made the application and was lucky enough to be the chosen candidate. And so, um, that was the next step. Uh, I became a, a full-time professor at Illinois Central College and, and, uh, like I did in, in my first job at Morton High School, I thought that was it. I made it. <laughs> yeah. So you, once <laughs> again, right. you're like, I really yeah. found yeah. what I'm most passionate about. This is it. Done. This is. And by that time, did you have your, uh, doctorate? Doctor, I did. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, once again, you're, you're ready to go. Ready to go. How long were you at Illinois Central then? I, I, ironically, uh, eight years. And the reason I say ironically is I, I was full-time at Morton High School for eight years and then made the transition to Illinois Central College where I was there for eight years um, before coming here. How did you end up coming here then? There's a story there as well. Like, like I said, I usually I'm, I, I love the job I'm in so much that I think it, it's over. And I can remember, um, I got a call from, uh, the president of Illinois central college. His, his name at the time was uh, John Irwin, Dr. John Irwin. And he called me directly from his office. It wasn't his secretary or anything. It was him. And I can remember picking up the phone and, and he said, Hey, I would like to see you in my office. 
Now, uh, Dr. Irwin is very, he, he was a uh, former clergy, so he had that aura, uh, and, and you respected Dr. Irwin. And, um, so I can remember saying, oh my, um, I just got, I just <laughs> I got better, called to Dr. Irwin's office. I better get over there right now. <laughs> That's yeah. right. And I can recall coming in and he said, he said, have a seat and, uh, had a seat and he said, he, he said that there's an opportunity I'd like for you to pursue. It's an administrative opportunity. And I, I said that, you know, I can remember saying, well, I, I love teaching and I think I'm a good teacher. And he said, I need you to pursue this opportunity. <laughs> he wasn't going to take no for an answer, but, but in, in that, I mean, it was a very short conversation, Jake, but, um, I can remember, uh, kind of in a surreal way, time just slowed down and I'm sitting here in his office and realizing that he had just opened the door to an opportunity. And, um, I, I had a choice. Uh, I could walk through that door or I could let that door close. And at the time I thought, if you let that door close, it's closed forever. Uh, and here is the president of, of the college where I'm teaching, opening a door to me, inviting me to walk through it. I better walk through it. Uh, albeit reluctantly, you know, the idea of being an administrator at the time. <laughs> yeah. And you can't say no to Dr. Yeah, Irwin. You cannot, you cannot. <laughs> and I did not. Uh, and, and I'm glad that I did not. So the, the opportunity was, um, was Six Sigma Black Belt. Now, before you think that there's a karate program at, <laughs> at Illinois Central, um, Illinois Central is, uh, is in the Peoria area. So it's a very positive and strong relationship with Caterpillar kind of a big company. Yeah. Sure. So just a little, a, yeah. a little bit. I'm, yeah. I've just, I've heard of them a little <laughs> bit. Yeah. Um, Caterpillar has long adopted uh, a, a quality, um, a quality program called Six Sigma or Lean Six Sigma. And so Illinois Central to, to be a good partner also adopts Lean Six Sigma. And so the opportunity was for me to uh, become a part of the Six Sigma program, which at Illinois Central was a stepping stone into uh, more advanced administrative opportunities. So if you get the invitation, it's, it's often, um, as long as you do well, uh, it's, it's often a, a good stepping stone to, to better things because you build sort of management tools. So I was a good English teacher. I could read Homer like anybody, right? Um, <laughs> but the idea of understanding uh, quality, understanding management, understanding uh, uh, all those other things that go along with leadership and managing an organization were part of the Six Sigma tool. So, um, you know, my first assignment was heading over to Caterpillar University and they do have Caterpillar University and working with employees at Caterpillar who went through the same, same program. And, and looking for advanced positions within the manufacturing operations there in, in, in their global, uh, right. Uh, yeah. They're all over the world, all over the world. Uh, some, some of the folks in that, in that class were from Canada, um, and elsewhere. So, um, it, you know, at the time I remember thinking, boy, this is a long ways from teaching English. <laughs> yeah. You're like, uh, what does this have to do with <laughs> yeah, English? Oh. Yeah. And I, I can remember, um, th you know, thinking, wow, this, how did I get here? Why am I doing this? Um, you know, I spent, uh, a, a good amount of time that the typical amount of time at Illinois Central, at least at that time. And, and Jake, I think they're, they're doing some different things over there now was two years. Um, I think it was a year, just over a year, year and a half into my role as a Six Sigma Black Belt at Illinois Central, an opportunity opened up in the academic division uh, for Associate Dean of Humanities, English and Language Studies. And that's when, of course, the the tap on the shoulder came again and said, we need you to, to move into that role. Um, you're not completely done with the Six Sigma, but you have your Black Belt. You've, you've demonstrated your ability there, and we want you to be uh, an interim in this role until we can fill it permanently. And uh, so I did. Uh, then, you know, I had to apply for that job and was lucky enough again to be the, uh, the successful candidate. So, um, you know, I, I felt at the time it was a good step back into academics for me. Yeah. Um, and by that time, I'd started to understand that I could have an impact as an administrator. That's what six, being in the Six Sigma office taught me is that if you get outside of the small role you play in an organization and take a look at the bigger picture, there are opportunities that are very aligned with teaching. Um, you're, you're organizing experiences, you're, you're um, helping people understand how they can do their work more effectively and efficiently. You're putting people in the right positions to succeed. 
Um, and so I thought this is, this is, this is a way that I can have an impact on students, even if it's not in the classroom. Yeah. Um, and I think this is, uh, again, where the, the peace studies yeah. <laughs> thing comes into play because you're- It you're, all comes back to that it, degree it, I failed it, to it get. It really does. <laughs> and I think if you didn't, if you wouldn't have had that interest in college, yeah. I don't think you would have gone, even though it's not, you're not directly, okay, let's solve peace in the Middle East here. Right. Um, you're directly solving conflict for whether it's an individual person or between two different parties, you're helping them right. find that way where they can they can have a more successful life or or a successful just a day a successful day, <laughs> helping them to envision a future that's better for them and others around them, um, and then giving them the tools they need to get to that vision uh, is really kind of what it's about. But. Yeah. So you were doing amazing things in that role and then what what happened how did then where does the coming to Kankakee Community College yeah so um my um uh the vice president of academic affairs at that time was a man named John Avendano uh, at Illinois Central College and um he had moved here to Kankakee Community College and was the the president at Kankakee Community College and so I I knew where he was I'd worked with him before and uh when I saw that the vice presidency uh for Ac vice president of academic affairs opened up at Kankakee Community College um my predecessor was a man at that time was a man named Dennis Sorensen, still in the area. He's, he's great, he, but he retired, and so that created a vacancy here. And I worked with with Dr. Avendano in the past, so uh, it seemed natural to to cast a net over here as well to see if, if there was any interest. Again, I I, I kind of didn't even anticipate uh, getting a, a call for an interview, but uh, here I was and had the opportunity to interview. And that was what. 2014. Okay. So, um, I accepted that role in, uh, in the summer of 2014 and, and made the move here as, as KCC's vice president for academic affairs. Wow. And yeah. what was your impression of Kankakee at that time? What I saw here was a wonderful healthcare system. What I saw here was a diversified and vibrant manufacturing economy. I saw a world-class university and an, in a world-class community college. How you can't put a puzzle together like that. That that's all the pieces, Jake. You've got a great community college. You've got a university. You've got wonderful healthcare. You've got a diversified manufacturing economy. Oh my! Everything is here. What was interesting to me though is um, I think the the folks who were here didn't necessarily see all of the assets that I saw with fresh eyes and a fresh perspective moving into this community. And I can recall having some conversations early on, even internally at KCC about self-confidence, uh, that collective self, sense of self-confidence uh, and whether or not this community, and quite frankly, I, I was more concerned at the time leading the community college and, and more specifically academic affairs at Kankakee Community College, just asking you know my team to have confidence in themselves. Yeah. You know, we're not just Kankakee Community College, we're Kankakee Community College. And and we have a, a great opportunity to serve a community that has all the assets, uh, everything it needs to grow and progress and develop and be world class. Um, so, uh, you know, that was that first year of learning, just thinking, wow, is it is it, is it a self-confidence issue? Why, why are all these perceptions expressed about this community that seems to have everything going for it and, you know, a, a, a future just laid out yeah. um, with, with all the strengths it needs? I, you know, I, I think there's something historical, um, you know, certainly in the past, and, and I've often said, I don't want to talk about the past, but in the past, I think the, the local economy was, was not diversified. It was solely focused on a single employer. And when that single employer left, it really made a huge impact. Mm -hmm. That's not the case anymore. Um, and so I think a couple of things have happened just in the 10 years I've been here. And that is, I think, just a groundswell of new leadership. Um, I, it's probably not the right way to say it, Jake, but young leadership, right? Young leaders are, are just stepping into roles and, and, thinking completely different about their ability to impact their local communities. And so it's so refreshing <laughs> because, you know, you don't hear those folks talk about the past. Um, you hear them say, you know, we've got everything we need right now. Now let's build the community we want to build. 
Yes. There are some of them in your building today who are doing, you know, great things in, in our community. I know they're working just outside these doors that yeah, we're talking about. Pathfinder. Into. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I am very, very thankful to be a part of yeah. this organization now. Yeah. But um, I think they're leaving behind some of those old stories and, and yeah. history is great. History is important. Um, we need to hold on to those stories and tell them. But when we let those stories impact where we're going in the future, yes. it's no longer history. It's yeah. now it's a self-confidence issue. And uh, I guess, you know, I, as I thought about it, I, I tried to get the people in my, in my area, you know, where, where I had influence in, in those first four years at, in Kankakee to, to say, stop telling the stories of the past. Stop thinking of yourself by what you were. Let's build who we want to be. Let's create the college that we feel we can do. And just, you know, letting people know that they have every ability to be a world-class community. And we had every ability to create a world-class community college. And I think we've done it. You had brought this up too. Even in the last 10 years, there's even been more manufacturing. But, you know, like, let's point out some of the ones that uh, have been, I, you know, replaced by Roper and General Mills yeah. and A.O. Smith. I mean, I'm sure you can, oh, you know, yeah. what are some of those that have been... You know, the, the the key here is is looking at how diversified this manufacturing base is. New Core Steel is an amazing company, uh, not just here locally. They have they have a broad reach globally as well. Uh, but what a great organization they are, and 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 they understand the power of community college and the partnerships there. So it's been fun and and rewarding to work with New Core Steel. Petting House is a is a great international company in in our area as well, and uh, I love working with them. You, but but look across the spectrum. So we have everything from very um, traditional uh, manufacturing to advanced manufacturing biopharmaceuticals. CSL Bearing is making um, the vaccines that save people, right? Millipore Sigma is in in biopharmaceutical manufacturing as well. When you when you and, and we could we could list all the manufacturers in the area. Crown Cork and Seal. Um, you know, we learned from uh, from their uh, plant manager. That's the, the the highest producing crown cork and seal plant in the nation, right here. I didn't know that. Absolutely. Oh, okay. So, I knew that they did a lot, but I didn't yeah. know it was the highest producing yeah. of their plant. Yeah. When you when you hear these stories uh, about what's happening here, it, it changes your perception not only of. Uh, you know, whether or not we have the tools and the ability to be world-class in, in everything that we do, whether it's healthcare or manufacturing or other areas of the economy. Um, but it changed the perception of the future as well. Look how diversified this is. We're making everything from, from, from rebar to, um, from steel rebar to, uh, vaccines. You are a, I would say one of the experts or people that can speak on Goshen, uh, that's been quite uh, causing a, a lot of questions in the community um, in uh, Mantino, because you're directly involved with that. So I feel like you would be a good person to speak on that. You got me in the speak hot seat here. Huh? I do. I, I, well, I just, you know, it, now bringing that yeah. up, um, yeah. I, I you know, wasn't planning on yeah. going that way, it's but okay. I, it just kind of dawned on me. I'm like, you know, I think Dr. Boyd actually could yeah. Yeah. speak on this because he's got a, a, a heavy background in it. Well, so. thank you for noticing that. It's, uh, you know, I, I think, you know, being involved in economic development is an extension of being a leader of a community college. It's part of our purpose to lead workforce training. It's part of our purpose to lead economic or be a part of economic development because we know that um, that we're, we're, uh, we're so important to the business and industry community who rely upon a skilled workforce and we'll reward that skilled workforce for us. Um, so, you know, I, I appreciate you noticing that. Um, in my, uh, all of my experience with economic development, and that goes back to my time in Peoria. I was, um, as I was an administrator and worked with Caterpillar as a Six Sigma black belt at the time, uh, in my capacity at Illinois Central, um, the same doctor when I had mentioned called me up to his office again when I was an administrator. And he said, I need you to go to China. Uh, uh, and you're like, it's another you one want me to do what? You want me to do what? <laughs> um, and, and, the, and the reason for that was uh, Caterpillar had a, had a great desire to bring additional suppliers to uh, closer to Peoria um, and, and, and needed a delegation to go to China and to visit different communities. So Beijing, Shanghai, Tiantai, and Hongzhou and pitch to them the values of 
opening a facility in the Peoria area. So I had the privilege of, uh, of going to China and visiting those four cities with an economic delegation out of Peoria, uh, representing the community, representing Caterpillar, representing Illinois Central College. What an experience that was for me, just to understand international business and how interdependent we are uh, on economies from across the world. Um, so, you know, it, it, when, when, when I, when I came here, I had the privilege of working with the economic Alliance. I'm currently chair of the economic Alliance. So, uh, get, to, uh, get to sit at the table. Uh, but even before I be, I, I became a, a director on the economic Alliance, I'll tell you, here's what I've learned. When, when a new business is, is seeking, um, a new facility or, or a site to build a new facility or to renovate an existing facility for a new purpose, they ask two questions. The first question is, is uh, utilities. Is there ample electricity? Is there ample water? Is there ample utilities for, for us, et cetera? Once they've solved that, almost invariably, the second question is, can we talk to the community college? The, the idea there is we need to know if there is a, a strong enough community college with enough students and with the right programs to create a workforce here. So utilities comes first, workforce comes second. So we get pulled in. I get pulled in on a lot of these conversations and I'm privileged to do so. Um, from the outset, the folks at Goshen have been fully invested in this community. Their questions were, how can, you know, they wanted to know what we had going on. They wanted to see our, our programs. And I'll tell you, when they walked to our facilities, our eyes lit up too, right? They, this, it made me feel good, Jake, because, um, you know, we, we do a lot of hard work to make sure that our programs are world-class. And when we bring an international leadership from an international company who has, uh, who has facilities in Germany, and, and elsewhere. And they look at our programs and they say, this, this is really good, Dr. Boyd. I say, thank you. You know, it makes me feel good. Sure. Um, but, but, you know, their first thing was how can, how can we build and make KCC stronger? Um, we want to hire your graduates. We want you to help us find, uh, people who are interested in advanced manufacturing and renewable, renewable, renewable energy, sustainable, uh, 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 strategies and get them into your programs. We want to partner with you. I, how could you, how could you get a better response than that? Um, rather than just take from, uh, from a community, they, they, they have from the start talked about what can we give back? How can we build and make stronger? Um, so even my early conversations with that team, uh, it struck me how professional they were, how action oriented they were and how interested they are in being a part of the community and hiring local people. And selfishly, Jake, hiring KCC grads. And that's that's why um, I, I've been eager to work with them. And my team has as well. Um, the, the, uh, um, the, the product they're making too, I think it's, it, it's, it's undeniable how important these are. You and I both have uh, lithium ion batteries in our pockets and our cell phones, yeah. uh, which are produced internationally, by the way. And so um, understanding how important it is for us to participate in a global economy, maybe the learning curve. It shouldn't be, should it? CSL is an international company. Uh, Nucor is a, is a global company as well. Petting House. Petting House is a global company. And so, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm a little struck that there seems to be an opportunity for learning um, mm -hmm. for us as we think about what it means to host an international company yeah. right here, right, right here at home. But I'm going to tell you, I, I think it's, it's a rare opportunity. And, um, if, if, uh, if, if, you know, the comment chairman Wheeler made, uh, the other day, I think is, is an important one. If we have any doubts about whether or not this impacts us, we should put those doubts aside and seize the opportunity. The opportunity is in front of us. Um, there are going to be jobs here, uh, a lot of them, because of this particular development. Kankakee County's next step it, it will tell everything. Are we going to be aggressive and say, let's make sure that this development benefits us individually and benefits us as a community? That's our choice. Um, I'll tell you, KCC is going to be there to create career pathways into that organization. Um, our programs are pretty pretty on already. so. Um, you know, at first, you, when you're working with an organization like Goshen, you think we're going to have to spend the next two years in curriculum development. It took us about two meetings when we realized we've got probably 80 to 90% of the curriculum developed already. 
they love what we've got going on in our electrical engineering technology division, uh, our HVAC division, uh, our manufacturing technology division, and elsewhere. They, they want KCC grads at every level. So we've got a couple of tweaks, but we're there, you yeah. know? And so um, there are family sustaining career opportunities here. KCC has a pathway to get people there. The college is going to be ready to connect anybody who wants to work, Jake. Anybody who wants to work is going to have an opportunity there, and KCC can put them into that place. That's our mission, man, and and it's it's part of our purpose. So that's what we're going to do. Not because of Goshen, but because we want to make sure that a development like Goshen is bringing to this county benefits the people in this county. Mm -hmm. And if they come talk to us, I think they'll see that it can. Yeah. And I mean, as far as I don't know if you can speak on, you know, some of the concerns that have been, you know, I, I feel like the biggest concerns I hear, uh, I guess we'll just go one by one. The first being that uh, it's a Chinese owned company. You know, the CCP has been a big concern. You know, I don't know if that's something that you can address on, there is a process that every, not just a China owned company, but yeah. any global company coming sure. to do business in the U S they have to go through a certain process to be cleared. Right. Yeah. I, I'm not and, smart enough to speak on that. I, yeah. I have enough confidence in our intelligence community mm -hmm. that if, if, and uh, look, this is high profile. This isn't happening under the covers. This isn't, or this is high profile. I have every confidence that our intelligence community, if there was a significant and apparent threat would have been involved from the get go. Um, given the fact that it hasn't tells me that, that, that there's nothing significant to worry about. Um, and you know, as to take that one step further, um, I, I have to trust them at the word that they're not part of the communist party. Um, until I, until I have evidence to prove otherwise, but the, the key factor here is what are we supposed to do? Stop all international trade or all international trade with China? Um, Let's take a look at our lives, Jake, and let's think about all of the imports and exports to that particular country. And let's let's say, okay, if, if we're not willing to participate locally um, in that international business, then maybe we should, as consumers, make that same choice. I, I think if we looked around at our daily lives and our typical practice, we'd realize how interdependent we are on international trade. Um, our farmers are exporting agricultural products to China. Yeah. That, we're, we're, that, that's the big thing that they, they depend on for us that's as right. our grain. Yeah. yeah. So look, I, I think, I think that's a deeper question for economists. Sure. Uh, I just, answer. you know, yeah. I just, it, since you're, uh, uh -huh. have been a big, uh, cog yeah. in the wheel of this well, thing. Thank you. Um, and then, you know, as far as the, uh, people are concerned about the hazard, the mm -hmm. waste, mm -hmm. Do you, have you seen anything on how that works on, on their end? And even yeah. not just them, but some of these other global companies that are already yeah. in the county, how do they dispose of their waste? You know, cause I'm sure you have knowledge of that. Sure. You know, I, I know that, uh, all manufacturing is regulated, all business and industry is regulated. And, uh, this particular industry is not free from those same regulations that every other industry in Mantino and in Kankakee County and quite frankly, Illinois and beyond uh, are regulated with as well. And so they'll have to abide by those same standards, EPA and otherwise. Um, and to the degree that they do not, they will face the same sort of sanctions that other organizations operating here locally will be as well. Um, as far as risk is concerned, I mean, there's risk every time we step out of our house um, and there's risks associated with every industry. Uh, we've got a lot of diverse industry in this community. And, you know, rather than focus our attention on a single emerging industry, let's be critical thinkers and look across all of our local manufacturing and, and industry and say, what are all of the risks that we have been comfortable accepting up to this point? How are those risks different or the same as the risks we're scared of now? I live in Mantino, Jake. Um, I'm, I'm not scared. Um, I understand there's risks. Um, 
we're here right next to the railroad. I've heard the, I've heard the, the I've heard the same train go by a couple times in in our in our conversation here, and that train goes by in Mantino, not far from where I live, multiple times a day. And you think about those incidents that happened in Ohio. I do. Yeah, I do. And that could happen here. And that train uh, comes through these tracks multiple times a day. I don't know what's on those cars. Um, I don't need to know. I know that there's risks associated with transport of anything. Um, so I, I think uh, I think before we express outrage, before we say let's stop the wheels uh, that are in motion as it relates to economic development, on those grounds and and in that conversation, Jake, I think we have to be critical thinkers and say wait wait a second, if our main concern is is hazards, what other hazards are we not addressing at the same time, and is this particular manufacturing operation? different in any way than some of the other hazards that we live with every day. And yeah. we understand that if it weren't part of our local economy, uh, we'd be saying very different things about how great it is to live around here. Right. And also, you know, maybe think about some of those other companies that do have hazards and maybe think, maybe we should uh, uh, concern ourselves not only with, you know, the battery uh, plant, but maybe some of these other ones too. It's got me thinking, oh, maybe I wonder how they're regulating their product or their plant and see if it's up to code or up to regulations or anything like that. I have every confidence that that those regulations are working and that those plants are undergoing regular inspection per those regulations and per state and, 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 and federal law. Um, that's what it's there for. Yeah. And, and it's, it's there to protect us. Yeah. Is there anything else that you'd want to talk ocean wise or, or anything, anything else you'd like yeah. to address on that? Yeah. I uh, didn't mean to throw you no, under okay. the bus it's there. Okay. <laughs> I, 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 lo I love talking about things like this. You know, I think that the narrative will change. For, first of all, I think you're starting to hear in the last couple of weeks. Um, and, and I know your podcast will be released a little bit after when we're recording it, of course, but actually this is going to come out Monday, okay. to be honest right. with you. So this will still be time. Timely. Yeah. Well, in the last couple of weeks, I think you're hearing a different voice and a different part of the conversation around Goshen. A lot of the folks who, who quite frankly, are very supportive of economic development are being more vocal in their support. And you're seeing that in some public forums. Um, so the conversation's already shifting, Jake. And, um, you know, you know, I, I know this because I, I sit with Goshen at tables and, and I know their timeline. I know what they're, they're looking for. And we're working hard to make sure that we're a good partner. Uh, they want to be up and running by end of December. That's an aggressive timeline. But what it means is they want to hire people sooner rather than later. And uh, they're, st they're working on that now and starting to make those hires. I think I heard... I don't, maybe you can speak on this. I yeah. heard something about December, even yeah. of this year. D December of twenty, yeah, December of this year, they want to be up and running. So they're already hiring aggressively uh, as they as they as they near December. It's going to be even more aggressive. But but here's why I say that. I think the narrative really changes once the the employees are in place because you and I both know it's a small community. Once. Uh, Hey, you know, my, my nephew has a job down there or my neighbor, my neighbor is working over there. And, and all of a sudden it's not this scary new thing that changes the environment uh, or changes the, the, you know, the scope and the scale of economic development in Kankakee County. Now it's a great employer and an opportunity. And I think you're going to start to hear more positive voices or um, a more normalized tone as it relates to uh, great opportunities. Or just some more answers to yeah. questions that people yeah. have, yeah. you know? So I think that's the big thing is um, just doing as much research as possible. And, cr and thinking you know? critically, you mm -hmm. know, thinking critically. The, um, you know, the the ability to voice uncritical opinions is, uh, is, is really... <laughs> Oh, sure. And yeah. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm trying to be as neutral as I can in this conversation. Mm -hmm. And I have, I will openly say I have my thoughts and opinions on it. Uh, I have my, my concerns, yeah. you know, but I... As do I, Jake. You know, I, I don't, oh, sure. I, I don't want you to think I'm, I'm you know... Uh, but definitely my, not. My main thing is... Do KCC students have access to family sustaining careers? Do the do the, the region that we serve, can they come to KCC and legitimately find access, affordable access to family sustaining careers? And the degree to which I can make that happen is, is there. Now, what I see in Goshen and that development are more family sustaining careers with higher than average wage uh, opportunity. How am I not going to open that up for our students? Yeah, you know, that's yeah. your first priority. Yeah, that's right. So, yeah, definitely. Well, thank you for spe yeah, <laughs> speaking yeah. on that. Yeah. I really appreciate that.
Since we're running uh, short on time, I mean, how would you like to close out yeah. just about yourself and about Kankakee Community College? I want to say, you know, personally, I feel like you are such a big asset to the community, not just Kankakee Community College, but the community as a whole. And I truly respect that you immerse yourself in everything community. You personally have done favors for me. I asked you to, uh, you know, <laughs> taste test the, the, our uh, Dairy Queen Blizzard that oh, we did, yeah. you know. That was um, a tough assignment, Jim. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I, I, I texted you, I called you, you're like, yeah, I'm available. Uh, what do you need? You know, and and you. If you had asked me to right... help you move a refrigerator, I would have told <laughs> you I was busy. But I was like, yeah. Hey, do you like Dairy Queen? <laughs> I think that's how I started the conversation. Um, because, yeah. well, you know, some people uh, have different. You yeah. Know. But anyway, you you know you jumped right in, and yeah. you know yeah. it was like, is this KCC related? Because if it's not, I'm not going to be there. <laughs> you know, so I'm just uh, you know you're a, a man of uh, you know you put yourself to action. Yeah. Well, Your thank you. For saying that. Yeah. yeah, thank you for saying that. Uh, you know, I tell you one one of the things that's happened here at KC at, uh, over there at KCC um, is that there's so much energy now. So once we recovered, something has changed in terms of the pace at which we operate. Our students are 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 so vibrant on campus, and there's a lot of energy right now. And new curriculum, we've opened some new programs. Our career and technical education, especially in the those manufacturing and manufacturing related careers, is exploding. So we've got some new things coming to market too. So um, I, I'm trying not to give spoilers here because I know our curriculum and academic <laughs> standards uh, group is working on this, but our computer science. Um, a, a c- curriculum is going to be really fun to talk about. And I think uh, very soon you're going to start to see some of our media talk about just a refreshed energy around computer science and a lot of opportunity for students that's more flexible and more aligned with industry standards. And I think it's going to generate a lot of buzz and a lot of interest. And uh, uh, even, even, uh, even further past that, some biopharmaceutical curriculum. Oh, okay. And, perfect. Yeah. And so that'll put us in, in some different areas that, that we haven't been in. So, you know, one of the things that, that I, I, I'll tell you about, uh, uh, about the privileges I have in leading is that we've got energy right now and, and, you know, typical to the past, you know, higher ed has been, um, uh, slow to, to move and it takes a long, not anymore. I mean, the team around me is ready to, to, to be action oriented and bring things to the market quickly and to make changes that we haven't been accustomed to making changes, you know, seven, 10 years ago. So it's going to be a fun time for us. I think, um, Kankakee Community College best years are ahead of us. And I think Kankakee County's best years are ahead of us too. The, uh, the mayor unveiled, uh, the city. Yeah, the city of Kankakee's new logo, City Rising. I think you could apply that across the county as well. Uh, but what what a great opportunity we have to be in a strong community. All the assets are here, Jake. A diversified economy, great health care. You've got um, a great university. You've got an amazing community college. The puzzle pieces are here. The puzzle is there, and I think um, you, you have know, diverse culture too. And diverse culture, that's right. You got you got everything. And now, I think that attitude, and I mentioned it earlier, that that attitude of 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 lacking self confidence or feeling that trauma from the past, you know, as younger leaders, um, and I think about the organization you're with, it's just a new energy. And I think we realize we can build our future. Let's get to it. Yeah. Well. Well said. I couldn't have said it better myself. Well, Dr. Boyd, this has been great. Such an honor. You're going to have to come back because there's so Anytime. many other things. <laughs> there's so many other things we can get into. Um, and I really enjoyed learning more about where you come from and your background. And I never would have guessed you come from a farm family and, and have that background. So um, so thank you for sharing all that. And thank you for all you do. And just a reminder that, you know, Dr. Boyd's door is always open. Mm-hmm. So never hesitate to reach out to That's him right. with anything. You so, got it. Yeah. Thanks for having me. This has been wonderful. This river can-